Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Everyone, welcome to the Eternal Bliss, a program of Nasr Al-Fatih Society. I am Nuruddin Olajide Balogun. I have the honor to welcome a great personality, an ustaz, an entrepreneur, a national PR committee member, MD Capel Foot Limited, makers of Brooks National Natural Oni, Alaj Ustaz Abdel Afis Salahuddin. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, sir. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You're welcome once again, sir. The topic for discussion is the ravage, ravaging drug addiction, Islam to the rescue. Well, Awudu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajim, Bismillahi Rahman Rahim. Wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al mursalin Muhammad wa alihi wa sabi ajma'in. Seek refuge with Allah from the shaitan. And we ask Allah to bless this household of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The topic for discussion is very crucial because it is a crucial crisis in the society today, everywhere in the world. Drug addiction is a drug dependence. And when the society begins to witness a situation where people, segments of population, irrespective of their categories, are uh, captured in the consumption of intoxicants. Because the, what we refer to as drugs in this context is not all medicine, medicines. We're talking about the consumption of intoxicants specifically. Okay, sir. And the intoxicant hazard is what makes it a case study for the society. And addiction, it is, it becomes addiction, the discussion becomes relevant when we discover that the intoxicant is now becoming a reference for lifestyle and the consumption pattern of population, of any given population. According to reports, it has been revealed that between the age of 25 and 63 years, in Nigeria in particular, are captured in the drug addiction now. And that is to say we're having a very prominent population of a society from age 25 to 63 becoming victims of intoxication. And when there is intoxicant in the system, it is not only a problem for the consumer, it becomes a problem for the society. For instance, if you consume, if you abuse drug like paracetamol, you will enjoy your system medically. You will go to the hospital for treatment. What happens to you as hazard of that may not necessarily affect another human being. But when you consume intoxicants and it becomes a menace in your system and in your uh, consumption pattern, you will not only enjoy your own self, you will enjoy people that are around you and the society itself. It is because everybody is now affected in the face of addiction. That's why the entire world is paying attention to tackling the drug addiction. And it's very, very important we do that. So we, we also do that in Nigeria. As of today, addiction has become a serious crisis because we have discovered that, according to a report in 2019, 40 million Nigerians are in it across the geography. And federal governments, state governments, non-government organizations are talking about it all over the places. So it's a worthy cause of discussion. And we have to look at how we can tackle it, even if we cannot obliterate it completely. We must sensitize the society to know that there is a problem and it's a growing problem. 
Let me quickly add why this thing is very relevant. Even the UN law assumes that when a nation will have drug addiction with respect to intoxicants, it should not be more than 5.6% per annum. But Nigeria record as of today is 14.3%. So ahead of the anticipated projection. I mean, play a figure of the global, global organization. Sir, are you saying the 25 to 30, 63 years are the categories? Are they the strictly categorized to drug addiction, or they are the ones that are more open to drug uh, addiction? What the report was saying, or is saying, is that if you look at those who are infected with this uh, social ailment, you will see the age 25 among them. You will see age 30. Or till you get to 60, you see that to say, you still find people that, is, that are 63 years old as addicts. Thank you, sir. From the UN report you just quoted, is the 25 to 63 years restricted to this uh, drug uh, addiction, sir? No. The report from the UNO says that. But events are unfolding, and new happenings are all over the place. The current experience now is seeing even age 10 smoking around the corners. 15 years old, students of secondary schools, I'm afraid, if it will not get to the primary school level. And the apprentices at a very tender age go to parks, you see them smoking hemp. And they're also into a lot of alcoholism. So automatically, it is a growing event, a growing concern, and a growing malady that may cover virtually every level of age. Perhaps very old ones may not be included. But definitely we, will have, we are having more than 25 years old now, below 25 years old now, getting, I mean, becoming the victims of drug addiction. And drug addiction is a very serious ailment, social ailment that can destroy entire nation. Now, thank you very much, sir. The drugs you have mentioned, the abuse, which automatically leads to the addiction, sir, it is very essential for us to be able to identify the drugs being abused that leads to the addiction. Well, I think let us be talking about addiction before we, instead of abuse, because abuse, you can have drug abuse, overdose, you understand? But we're talking about intoxicant items. And definitely the intoxicant items we are looking at here now includes marijuana, liquors, tramadol, heroin, cocaine. These are things that are being consumed. And in, in addition to that, there are new initiatives by, this, by, the, by the addicts. They are now smoking dunks. They're smoking dunks now, dunks of lizard. They collect the dunks of lizard and they smoke it. Some are now inhaled. We have now had inhalants. What are these inhalants? The urine, they take urine now. They will collect urine and they will inhale it. They go to sewage areas. Some, some of them will open the sewage and they inhale. And when you do all this, they go into your system and they intoxicate. I will not know what really comes upon the society, the modern society, that they want to feel high all the time. <laughs> And this is happening to the 
very vital age bracket of our society, the younger ones. When we talk about 63, the percentage of 63 years old in this crisis, very low. And the situation is becoming endemic and is becoming uncontrollable. Schools are more or less the breeding ground of this now. Before it was higher institution, you can see some of this. But secondary schools are now included. Obviously, and obviously, social clubs. obviously, it is not sounding any funny. If we can go, youth can go as far as inhaling from the septic, uh, septic uh, tank. That leads me to the question of what are the effects, the possible effects of all of these uh, drug uh, addictions? When the other time we were talking about when you inflicting, you start inflicting default on the human system. The human system rejects intoxicants in all ramifications. If you meet somebody who is versatile in biochemistry of I mean, like we are human beings, he will tell you that there's nothing good about intoxicants. And the moment you alter the system, you create, uh, uh, what do you call it? The catastrophe on the humanity. For instance, now you discover that if you see riot, rioters, they need to be sensitized to uh, feeling high. And the only way they can do that is when they consume something that would alter the system. Balance is in the body system. When you take alcoholic thing, it will alter it. It will make you behave abnormal at a stage. You can say gradually if you control, but it takes time. It's just a matter of time. When you start taking something gradually, gradually, this, the, the, the analysis of body system is that you must not take intoxicants because it doesn't do anything good into your system. So the effect of that is that we are destroying the chemistry of human body, number one. We are destroying the balance of social sanity, number two. We are, we are disrupting the peace in the society. If you want to, you see, we are, and we, we maybe we'll come to that. We we'll wonder that who are the real people behind promoting this? Because naturally, there's nothing intoxicant can do for you. Whether it is tablet, whether it is weed, whether it is uh, liquor or drink, whatever, whatever. I, I have seen a situation where somebody was just licking sweets. We never knew that it was a drug. Sweet, yes, sweet. It was a drug. A scholar captured a situation in Saudi Arabia. I'm sorry to mention it. He's a popular scholar. And he saw some of the youth. They may not be Saudis, but they, they, are, they, are, they were seen. I mean, they, were, uh, they, they got them. They were just chewing a plastic. On finding out, they discovered that it was a drug. Drug is all over the place now. Just like you want to throw imbalance into the system of society. Ecology is being affected, family being affected, politics being affected because you are using the drug guys, drug addicts, to promote politics, and the drug addicts will ask for their share in the political wind force. <laughs> Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are building a mosque and Islamic complex at Asheshe along the Lagos Ibadan Express Road, and we need your help to complete the construction of the mosque. The Lagos Ibadan Express Road every day has more than 300,000 vehicles. That's about 9 million vehicles passing the road on a monthly basis. That's about 52 million passengers. And these are passengers that will benefit from the sighting of this mosque. The mosque has capacity for over 4,000 worshippers and will provide world-class facilities for traveling Muslims, including prayer points, ablution conveniences, medical facilities, training centers, conference and event facilities, and much more. We are now at a crucial stage, and we do need your help to complete the roofing and, of course, to complete the construction of the mosque. Allah has promised a place in heaven for whoever helps to build a mosque. And we hope you can join us to complete the construction of this mosque 
and especially to complete the roofing, inshallah. To donate, please use the following bank accounts. Account name, Nasfat Mosque Development Account. Or you can make a USSD payment. May Almighty Allah continue to reach us all as we donate to this project. Jazakumullah khairan. The, the effect is, uh, when you look at drug addiction, everywhere in the world conclude that the effects are not favorable to the society, to the humanity, to everybody, to uh, the person who is addicted to. to. Definitely, if you want to commit crime, you see crime. I've even read the report that 80% of the crimes committed in the world are traced to leak to drugs, drugs addiction. 80%. They say from 73 to 80 percent. So when you see criminalities all over the place, you can't dissociate drug from it then. And then you see homes that are not settled. You see somebody who just wake up one day and, and stab her husband or husband stabbing the wife, the wife to death. Or the daughter or the son because it, it, it is now it's so, it's so common now, the addiction. And people can go any length in order to enjoy the addiction, despite the fact that it is injurious to the system. So we are seeing insurgents, all the insurgents we see all around us, definitely have been, they have been sustained on the drug. You have to put them on high level, high emotion, high emotion and propensity, so that they can feel very bold and, 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 uh, and blunt and brutal. We also discovered that when you talk about the nudity, you know, the people, the, sometimes when you see people dress up, you just wonder, why can a woman be dressed like this? But you will not know maybe it is an effect of, an impact of what he has, she has consumed or he has consumed. So, so definitely it is affecting, and it's destroying the, the productivity, the labor force, because when you take Intoxicant, that is, the, you, are, you, are become, you are already a, a, an addict. You got to work, you can't produce. You you're either sleeping or lying down, I do, I, or you're talking because it affects the brain, the mental makeup. It will also definitely mean that as long as we're having addiction, we'll be having a drawback in our educational development, a decline in our economic development, and on a lot of unsafety uh, on all over the places. We see the robbery. Do you, have you ever seen a situation where robbers will come, go on their exercise without taking drugs? No. So these are things. It's a serious hazard and which is creating a lot of turbulence as a challenge in the world. Now, now that we have been able to establish the drug addiction, Obviously, it is rampant, it is everywhere, no doubt about that. Are there Islamic uh, uh, solutions to this uh, nightmare called uh, drug uh, addiction? Well, definitely, because you know that Islam has advocated peace, and the name of, of the religion is peace. And it is not just peace theoretically, it is peace practical. So definitely it is something anti-Islam, anti-ethics, anti-humanity. And uh, automatically Islam speaks very, very, very broadly and very firmly about it. Not only condemning or prohibiting, it also deals with it like you are dealing, like a counselor is dealing with a patient. For instance, when they talk about, when the issue of intoxicants came up, the way Allah responded as a guide to us is very interesting. So they will come and ask you, they will come and ask you about intoxicant. You see, there is a very big, uh, very interesting thing about Islam. Islam does not mention stout, uh, dry gene. It talks about, Islam talks about intoxicants. Anything you can turn around to become intoxicant, Islam has covered it. So they will come and ask you about intoxicant. Tell them that in it, they will see something like good. And in it, there's a lot of sins. 
and the sins they are in are higher than what they think their benefits. So many that Islam will look at a situation like that and want to even address the people that are victims, want to talk to them. Because this, 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 the ayah that I quoted now, so concise to cancelling. It's not all about just can you destroy them, remove them from No, you have to talk to them. Talk to them that what they are doing is wrong. Islam said that we must talk to the victims of drug addiction. Then later on, they also ask. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentioned that when they come, when they, they are intoxicated and they want to pray, they cannot pray. Look at that level again. That is to say that if you want to observe your salat and you are intoxicated, you, you cannot. So automatically, if you want to observe salat, you will not drink. That's another measure. The last measure is, Allah says, now, he said, finally, in intoxicant, drugs that are intoxicants, we have to specify drugs that are intoxicants, and gambling, and all other things like that. This Allah described as dirty, dirty aspect of satanic works. The way he describes this is so, so concise that it is dirty, it is not, it is not good for you at all whatsoever. He said, You just run away from it completely if you want to succeed. The society cannot go. Mexico is dragged into it. You understand? Nigeria is getting dragged. There is, Nigeria is now number fifth country that is being infected with drug addiction. Number fifth number in the fifth, world. According to the report, 2019. And we are not, we are not, we are not improving on getting out of it. Because the situation is getting bad every day. Women are now getting more involved. Codeine, which is cough syrup, is now being used as drug yes. to intoxicate. Tramadol is supposed to be well controlled completely. Before you can take Tramadol, it must be on a very strict recommendation. By, but anybody taking it freely is already on drug. So That's these are things. So definitely Islam is saying in this sense that Humanity must run away from it completely. Completely. But you see, we are having a serious problem here. Individual cannot do it successfully at all. Individual cannot. But let me just mention category that as far as Islam is concerned, if you ask what is the position of Islam on drug addiction, it will start by saying that you cannot have beauties. You can't be bringing in wrong drugs in the, name of, in the name of commerce. Most of the, some of the pharmaceutical companies are involved in this crisis now. They are bringing in some of these drugs that are intoxicants in the name of, uh, in the, under the disguise of making provision for drugs for some patients. No, we have discovered that some of the pharmaceutical companies are involved in, in doing business with the drug addicts. And tramadol is now prominent. It's so prominent that a few years ago, there was a seizure of five, 500, that is 500 billion worth of tramadol. 500, 500 billion. billion. So this is a problem that we, and that is to say a lot of stakeholders are involved. And when you want to tackle a problem like this, if everybody is not cooperating, you won't get it. Get How can the Islamic uh, organizations help in this uh, situation? Well, I know a lot of organiz I mean, a lot of organizations are talking about it, and Nesfat in particular is talking very seriously about, and they are working. Not only talking, they are working. They are already collaborating with NDLEA, and they are working with UN UNICEF, because unfortunately, greater, very useful percentage of youths are captured, are involved in this. And that's why UNICEF can come into it. Nesfad is already doing, every year, is doing a lot of counseling activity so that the society can be sensitized, so that the society can be enlightened and educated very thorough that there's nothing good about drugs. And this has to go to the homes. 
home fronts. I believe that very well, as Nesfat is talking to the public, Nesfat should go further to talk to the homes. Parents, parents must pay attention to their children. Situation is becoming unbearable because it can tear off the society and we will not get anywhere as long as we are having addiction. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I want to believe as Nasrat has taken it upon themselves, then every other religious organization do so. It will help drastically in bringing back the youth and even those 63 below and above, bring them back to uh, a, a normal. So I say a very big thank you for coming. May Allah preserve you on goodness. I hope one will call you again. You you attend to our call because I know you have a very busy schedule. Thank you, so, thank you very much, sir. Viewers at home, you've listened, particularly the youth. You understand. It does more harm than good. So let's stay away from drugs like Islam has preached. Stay away from drugs. Say no to drugs. I remain Nuruddin Olajide Balogun. Till we meet again tomorrow. Salamu alaikum. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.